Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for the next episode of the Falklands campaign uh, in Attack Sub. So having completed the first mission, which was the um, brave attempt by the submarine Santa Fe to escape, um, I've now moved on to the next mission, which is the sinking of the cruiser Belgrano. Now, for those of you who are wondering what might have happened if the Santa Fe had made good her escape, the second mission um, allowed for an attack by the Santa Fe upon a British RFA escorted by HMS Minerva. So um, it, would, it would have represented a significant threat to the British fleet had, had that scenario taken place uh, historically. And in game terms, I expect the task force would have suffered because, of course, this being the very early stage of the naval campaign, at, at no point during the Falklands campaign did the British have in, quite enough shipping to do everything they wanted to do. And, uh, of course, the, the process of ships taken up from trade was still being put into action. And so any losses among the fleet auxiliaries at this early stage could have had disastrous consequences. So... I mean, disappointing for the Argentinian side, but from the British side, an enormous relief uh, for the purposes of this game that the Santa Fe did did not make it. Um, so this brings us now to the adventures of HMS Conqueror as she tries to find the Belgrano. Now, this is a fairly standard scenario, except that you see a lot of the rules amendments that we saw in the previous mission. So on the right, we've got HMS Conqueror. Everything's fairly straightforward and as per the usual rules. Um, you'll notice again the Argentinian side, the Belgrano, her two escorting destroyers and the accompanying fleet tanker. They all have separate contact level counters because again, like the British in the previous mission, their level of data sharing is not sufficient for um, the Belgrano's helicopter to be able to help out um, the other ships in the task force. And also, they just they just lacked the um, integrated systems to allow them to share that kind of information quickly. So it's very much a case of every man for himself when they're trying to find HMS Conqueror and stop her. Now, the British don't have everything their own way. There is a time limit on this scenario, too. It is a three-deck scenario, and that is three full decks. If the British fail to sink the Belgrano by the time the third deck has been played through, then the assumption is made that the, um, that the Argentines have managed to make good their escape and left the area and the window of opportunity has closed. So how do the British go about attacking the Belgrano? Well, it's not as straightforward as it sounds, because ordinarily Conqueror would probably just want to dash up, establish contact, sink the thing and run. But unfortunately, the rules of engagement being what they are, she needs permission. So what has, uh, um, what has to happen first is that after establishing contact with the Belgrano, with her sonar, um, the British have to wait until either they or the Argentinians draw or play a card with a contact value of seven. If they, um, if they discard a card with that value, it doesn't count. Once that happens, the sink it card, which Happy Wanderer has created specifically for this scenario, is shuffled into the present deck. So the British can maintain their contact on the Belgrano and the other ships as well, um, as best they can. But they have to wait until this card surfaces to finally receive permission to fire on, on the Argentinian task force and, as history has it, sink the Belgrano. So it's not straightforward at all for the British. That said, neither is it for the Argentinians the weather rules affecting helicopters, which applied in the Santa Fe scenario, also apply here. So bad weather occurs on a helicopter check of an X or a zero, and the weather only clears on a draw five or greater. Just to make, um, just to make um, life even worse, um, the Argentinian action draw um, 
for when uh, is is um for their hand is minus one card until they they establish contact with HMS Conqueror. So they're operating with a reduced hand from the start, which is not great. So um just to just to make their lives even trickier because they are not in an optimal anti-submarine state at the start of the scenario. The Argentines cannot use active sonar or um, launch helicopters until an Argentinian ship is fired on or until they gain contact level one or greater on the Conqueror. So the task force is actually going to have a really tough time with this one. Um, the, the Belgrano herself, of course, is heavily hobbled because she doesn't have any intrinsic anti-submarine capability other than her helicopter, which she cannot launch until someone sees the Conqueror. So they're going to have to spend an awful lot of this scenario hoping and praying. As if this were not enough, there was the restrictions placed on the Belgrano because of... Um, fuel limitations and cruising speed. So um, she was only traveling at 18 knots, which was significantly slower than HMS Conqueror. So in an, in attempting to open or close the range with Conqueror, I don't know why she'd want to close the range with Conqueror, to be honest, but for opening, she has to play the card, not have it countered, and then successfully draw a random number of four or greater in order to actually execute that um, that action. So both sides have significant headaches that they have to overcome. The British want to get in and get contact early, but they don't want to lay themselves open to being um, contacted in turn, especially if the PM takes a long time to make her mind up as to whether they can sink the Belgrano or not. The Argentines, for their part, are going to have to put up with the fact that they're going to be not totally helpless, but very, very passive in the early part of the scenario. And they can only hope that bad weather, poor sonar returns and all sorts of other things um, muck up the British chances of finding them until they're either able to get away or, the, um, or, or by some miracle they manage to attack and sink Conqueror. It all depends. I mean, it could go wrong for the British. On many levels, um, the PM may not make her mind up until it's too late. Belgrano may escape anyway. Most embarrassingly, Belgrano's escorts may even sink the Conqueror. You never know. So all that said, um, let us start. So the British go first. They start with a hand of four cards, three plus one for the Conqueror. The Argentines start with a hand of seven. Because, of course, it's minus one until they actually spot the Conqueror. So the point of having the Puerto Rosales along is she does absolutely nothing in terms of helping to hunt Conqueror down. But she does give the Argentines another precious card, which they will need, to be honest. So it's the start of deck one. What are Conqueror's options? Well, they're pretty good to start with, actually. So she is going to go for a passive sonar detection straight off. She's not going to bother with the escort. She wants the Belgrano. The Argentines are going to rely on some rather choppy weather on the surface to reduce Conqueror's chances. So her sensor value of four is reduced to three. Ooh, brilliant. She got quite a strong lock there. So... The Belgrano has been found already. And so quite happy with that, Conqueror is going to draw a card. It's not a value of seven, sadly, but <laughs> we'll see how we get on. So they, they now have to make contact with London to see whether they get permission to sink the monster. Now, frustratingly for the Argentines, none of their ships can play that card at this juncture. There's they, they can't play that either because they don't even know where Conqueror is. And they have a stack of weapon cards they can't use. So what they're going to do, they have a... They are going to try and burn through the deck a bit. It's a tactic I, I didn't use as much as I should have done. 
with the Santa Fe. That, that was with the benefit of hindsight and assumed knowledge of the British hand, but it's not a bad one to pursue. So she's going to discard those three cards, knowing happily that the British won't have them, at least not until the next deck, and is just going to draw another three. Oh no, that was close. <laughs> Okay, so that ends the Argentinian turn. Back to the British. Now, what are we going to do? We're still waiting for London. Um, the British are actually going to be very cautious and not let the Argentines see them unless they really have to. So they're going to discard that helicopter card and just fill their hand up. That's not too bad. Back to the Argentines, the only card they can really play is Sensor Detection, Passive Sonar, and they're going to get the Bouchard pinging quietly away. Um, Conqueror, of course, is having none of this, so she's going to reduce the Bouchard's um, Sensor rating to minus two. And yes, she passes unnoticed. So the Argentines will draw their card. Not something they can use, but at least something they can throw out later. What of Conqueror? Hmm. She has a contact reduction card, so it's really tempting, really, really tempting, to um, go active and see whether she can strengthen her hold on the Belgrano while she is waiting um, for orders from London. Because, um, I mean, it is chancy, but then the Argentines can't see her at all. So maybe she can get away with it. Yes, she's going to go active and try and improve her hold on the Belgrano. The Argentines have no counter. So sensor level of five with this. Oh, yes, she does it. So she can see the Belgrano even better now. Still no sign of that high value card she needs to uh, get the message through to London. Now the Argentines are stuck. They want to hang on to these active um, sonar cards for later in the game. Um, so they're just going to chuck out the card they can't use for now. See, the other reason they don't want to draw too many cards is they may inadvertently help the British player by drawing one of sufficiently high value that the message gets through to London. The longer they can put that evil hour off, the better. So back to Conqueror. Well, that is an absolute gift. She is going to go passive with that one, just to be careful. Nothing the Argentines can do, so it's four... Yep. She has the Belgrano dead to rights with contact level three. She just has to play nice and wait till she's allowed to actually uh, send a weapon in the ship's direction. <clears throat> so the Argentines, the only thing they can do is play that as a passive sonar. The Bouchard is going to try her luck again. And once more, Conqueror's having none of it, reducing her sensor rating to minus one. Ooh, that was close. I mean, it wouldn't, it would have failed anyway, but Conqueror is being as careful as she can be. So the Argentines draw their next card. No, nope. still no sign of a reply from London. There's a bit of nail biting going on on the Conqueror now. This is possibly a dangerous thing to do, but I think the British are justified in discarding that card. Hopefully they won't lose any of their lock on the Belgrano. Let's see if they get... No, they still not, they're still not getting a card with a high enough random number. And the longer they wait around near this Argentine task force, the higher the risks become. Um, and of course, the Argentines are doing more now. The the Bouchard is, uh, has, has found her pace and she's um, she's pouring on those searches. 
getting a bit more. Ooh, that was close. The Conqueror had no counters this time, and had that been one level higher, the Bouchard would have detected the Conqueror. Well, from the British perspective, it's getting hotter and hotter down here. <laughs> um, okay, Argentines are not overjoyed by that, but happy enough. Um, I suppose just for form's sake, Conqueror might as well get the best, shiniest contact level on the Belgrano that she can. Again, there's no real reason for her to bother with the escorts, because if they never spot her, a, a superb outcome for Conqueror would be sinking the Belgrano and then exiting before the rest of them even work out where she is. So she is going to go for it. Uh, and she does it. She has an absolutely superb contact level on the Bel Belgrano now. She just needs to wait. Oh, yes, that's worth hanging on to. So what about the Argentines? They've got some tough decisions to make now. Um, given their detection capabilities, that might well be shooting for the moon. So they are going to discard that. And they're going to draw... Ooh, a helicopter. That will come in useful later when they're finally able to launch one. Now, what's Conqueror going to do? I think, in the interests of moving things along, she's going to take a huge risk and discard her backups and see if she gets something decent that she can actually use. Ah, uh, not really. And neither of those was a uh, random number of seven. Where are these cards? Uh, the Argentines are going to reluctantly discard one of these. But they they do need some options for keeping the pressure on Conqueror. Oh, they needn't have bothered, I suppose. <laughs> um, Conqueror's in a similar awkward position. And she wonders what she ought to do. She's going to take a huge risk as well, because the one thing she's not likely to need in the near future is that evasive action card. So she is going to ditch it. And she gets another passive sonar. Okay. I think there's going to be a period of watching and waiting now while both sides angle for a, a a position where they can do something. The Argentines, of course, would do what they did last turn, discard one of those cards. and Sorry, the, the um, active sonar cards, and they don't get a terribly good trade-off for it. Uh, what about Conqueror? She doesn't really want to risk damage to her sonar by overloading it, so she's still not going to bother with the escorts. So she'll just discard that sensor detection card, the passive sonar one. And, ah, excellent. She has drawn a random number of seven, which means Mrs. T now gets shuffled into the deck. And I'll put her in face up so that it can be a bit of a surprise when she uh, emerges. Okay, London has received the message and they are mulling over their options. Um, blissfully unaware of this, perhaps, the uh, Argentines are just going to discard that card since they can't use it at all and see what they get. Mm, uh, still not brilliant. Um... Conqueror will Conqueror will actually get rid of that card because it's probably good to have a backup weapon in case the first shot fails for whatever reason. And another close open range, okay. Um the Argentines can't really do much with what they've got. Um Yes, they're just going to get rid of that one for now. And they draw 
another weapon lock on. At least that was slightly better than the previous one. Um, back to Conqueror, she's just going to carry on discarding while she waits for London. So the close open range card can go and she gets another close open range card. Okay, then. Uh, same with the Argentines. That's not a bad card, but they need to get get up there. Maybe, maybe they'll take a chance at getting rid of that one. And drawing this one. Ooh. Although, actually, given, given what the odds are of them actually finding Conqueror for any length of time, that's probably a good hip shot that they could keep in reserve. Um, Conqueror's still discarding as well. It's slightly tempting for the British to just throw loads of their hand away each turn, but you don't want to lose good cards, and no one's got any idea when the PM is going to authorise the attack or not. Uh, yes. The Argentines might lose this one. What they really want at the moment is a passive sonar card, or two. Ah, not that. And a crack at actually um, finding the Conqueror, because then they can begin reacting and playing normally. Um, I don't think Conqueror will want to keep that. She's still playing the subtlety game. So she draws a helicopter card. Well, that'd be an easy choice for discard next turn. Um... Hmm. No, the odds of the Argentines being able to play that are really, really high. Uh, sorry, low even. So they go, ah, that's more the sort of thing they want. They need to start stocking up on those. Conqueror, of course, will chuck that out. And gets that? Mm, okay. Not something she needs. Um, looking at their options, I think it makes most sense if they get rid of one of those. Perhaps, yeah. Yes, because they do want to keep the close open range just in case. Ah, not handy. <laughs> Right, Conqueror, what are we doing? I think we're just going to chuck that out, really. We're not in any danger. None of the Argentine ships can see us. Um, that's a handy one to have around. Um, easy decision for the Argentines. That one's going to go. Yeah. Not something they can use either. I'm sorry, guys, this is degenerating into a bit of a very cautious discard and draw session. Now, a player with much more courage than I would probably be doing what I talked about earlier and just discarding huge numbers of cards just to you know, either get Mrs. Thatcher or would be building up contact locks on the other ships. But being a terribly, terribly cautious soul... Uh, I'm, I'm basically not wanting to do that for Conqueror. And as for the Argentinians, if I was them, I, I would not exactly be in a hurry to see Mrs. Thatcher appear to make her decision. So that is why I'm being a bit careful about that. Um, I think Conqueror can get away because she, she has a no attack um, box there. She could get away with taking the risk of ditching the silent running card, especially as the Argentine detection capabilities are so poor. And oh, look, she gets one back straight away. What about the Argentine side of things? Well, that one's a bit of a no brainer. We'll get rid of that. Ooh, not a bad weapon lock on card. They might discard the other one next turn to make room for continued drawing and discarding. The Brits will do the same thing again. Same same risk assessment. Hmm, okay. <laughs> good, good bit of self-defence building up there. 
Uh, yes, on their turn, the Argentines will get rid of that weaker attack card. They really, really want passive sonar cards, but they're just not getting any. Um, Conqueror will take a chance on not needing that. Come on, Mrs. T, where are you? Ah, oh, another close open range card. Well, I don't know if we'll need two of them, to be perfectly honest. Argentines, yep, you were ready to throw that card away as soon as you drew it. Another handy card. Conqueror's going to lose one of those because she's or she already has the Belgrano right where she wants her. And so it's simply a matter of just finding, finding Mrs. Thatcher. Now that would be the interesting title for a game, wouldn't it? God knows what it would be about, but just a thought. Um, right, this is a tricky decision now because the Argentines have a full complement of very useful cards. Um, they'd want to keep that if the Belgrano has a chance of escaping. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the only logical move is to discard the card they have an, an extra of. So with some reluctance, evasive action will go. That will be an easy discard for next turn. Conqueror's options are very much the same. She's willing to risk the possibility of detection just to get through the deck. I think that card may be worth keeping. She could always substitute. Um, she could throw that one out next turn. Um, Argentine, same choice. That's not a great weapon lock-on card, so that's going to be discarded. Come on, passive sonar, where are you? Nope, still no joy. Uh, the Brits are going to opt for... Actually, no, let's chuck that one out. Anyone seen, seen the Prime Minister? She made up her mind yet? There's a rather large number of men out here on four ships and a submarine wondering what's going to happen next. And nobody seems to have any good options. The Argentines will chuck that one out. Ah, oh, still can't use it because of the restriction on active sonar. No! <laughs> um, Conqueror, who's uh, now beginning to suffer from a kind of nervous boredom tension is chucking out her close open range card and she gets exactly what the argentines wanted oh dear oh the agony um the argentines will ditch that card because they want to keep their options as broad as possible Ooh, battle stations that could be quite handy depending on the circumstances Conqueror will discard that card, but they'll do it very ostentatiously just to rub it in to their hypothetical Argentine opponents. And they get that. So back to difficult decision time for Argentina. What are they going to do? Belgrano's going to need her helicopter when they're finally able to use it. Um, that close open range is handy. That detection card is going to be essential later and so is the weapon lock on i suppose the least important card or the least important thing is sinking conqueror if they can get belgrano away so i think it makes most sense to lose that for now with great reluctance of course because it's a good card and they, they get a slightly harder to use one but hey uh, the British are just going to get rid of that card. Come on, Mrs. T. And they get a defensive card. The Argentinians will pursue the same logic and chuck out that weapon card. And they get damage control. That could be worth keeping if they get a chance to use it. I mean, they're hoping they don't have to use it at all, but it's 
good, especially on a big ship like the Belgrano. Um, the Brits, who are getting increasingly impatient with London and biting their nails now, chuck out that card and draw this one. Argentina. Oh dear, more difficult choices. They'll reluctantly lose battle stations. Actually, no, they won't. Given how easily ships sink in this game, damage control is, for all its massive usefulness, probably the card which they could could most do without. And they get another detection card that they cannot use. Oh, this is frustrating. Um, the Brits are feeling very much the same way. They're going to just discard that active sonar card and carry on marking time, waiting for the government to decide something. They'll at least get to tease the Argentines with that other passive sonar card. Um, yes, Argentina's just going to chuck out that active sonar card. And they draw... Ooh, contact reduction at long last. Something that they can actually be proactive about. Um, the Brits are going to lose that one. And they get that. Where is Mrs. Thatcher? So, the Argentines are going to go straight for a contact reduction attempt on the Belgrano. And it fails! Ah, oh, so much hope on that one. Their first lucky break in ages, and it didn't yield anything. Never mind, they can take comfort from the fact that the Brits are getting equally frantic and wondering when they're going to get their fire orders. I'm going to keep my nerve and carry on discarding slowly and surely, rather than in a mad, insane rush. Another passive sonar card to tease the Argentines with. And speaking of them, and um, they're definitely ditching that. They're not going to get a chance to use that anytime soon. And they get something equally useless. Um, Brits will simply throw that out. Ooh, that is a good firing card. They'll definitely be swapping that for one of their... Um, less capable. Well, they'll keep it and chuck out a less capable one next turn. The Argentines will lose that. Come on, passive sonar, where are you? So the Brits, I mean, this is really a no-brainer now. They'll get rid of that. And they get a technician. That could be handy. Um, the Argentines will take a risk and get rid of that one. It's a useful card to have, but with the combination they've got in hand, they're probably better off losing that one. Urgh! So much active sonar and they can't use it. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take my chances as the Brits and get rid of the technician. And we have a um, thermal layer. Okay. Handy, if the Argentines ever get round to trying to detect us. Uh, that's an easy one. They'll get rid of that one. Useful, perhaps. The British will discard that one. Tearing their hair out still over what London's doing. Just draw. Um, I think the Argentinians will lose that one. Again, it's all about keeping the broadest range of options for when they're finally able to do something. Um, and that'll be an easy decision next turn too. Um, for the British, similarly, no point keeping that inferior weapon in hand. That may be of more use. The Argentines could have ha could have made use of that. Um, Belgrano can only keep one helicopter in the air at one time, so they're going to lose that one. 
draw their card. Mm, not bad. They might have a chance of using that. Um, the British will ditch that because they don't really feel the need for it. And they get one of those. Not a bad trade-off. Um, Argentines, they... Oh, oh, the difficulty. They might lose that reluctantly because, again, they, they're going to probably end up having to play this quite defensively. I mean, they're amazed that Mrs. Thatcher hasn't come back to authorise Conqueror to sink the Belgrano. But, you know, time is ticking. Uh, for the Brits, I think we'll lose that one. Silent running. Hmm, OK. Well, the Argentines haven't really been doing a good job of trying to find us, so <laughs> they're going to lose that card from their hand. And as ever, as they've been doing the entire game, the Argentines are praying for a passive sonar card, which they're not getting. The Brits will lose silent running. And get more silent running. Argentina. We'll chuck out that card. Hmm, that could be useful. The Brits will lose the other silent running. They, they really just want to get this job done and go home now. And look, the Brits have been consistently getting these cards. The only ones that the poor Argentines are able to play at this stage in the game. Um, the Argentines will give up that card. Finally! Finally! A favourable chance. And again, just to rub it in, the Brits will very ostentatiously discard that passive sonar card. And they get another one. Oh, the unfairness of life. Never mind. At long last, the Bouchard is going to switch on her passive sonar and have a crack at detecting the Conqueror. So it's a rating of zero plus four. No, they don't do it. Oh, dear. But they do get another helicopter card. Um, the Brits, for their part, will just carry on teasing their opponents by discarding that. And getting one of those. <clears throat> the Argentines again find themselves with two helicopters, so that can go. And another battle stations card. Hmm... What about the Brits? They don't really need two close open range cards, so they're going to chuck that one and just draw. They get a helicopter. Um, similarly, the Argentines really don't need two battle stations cards, so that can go. Ah, and they draw a contact reduction chance. Another opportunity for the Belgrano to try wriggling loose. Um, the Brits will just discard the helicopter. Nah, not really, not really a good card for them. So the Argentines are going to try and reduce the contact level on the Belgrano. And they don't do it. They needed a four or greater. That was a shame. Come on, Mrs. T. It's been ages. What's going on? Uh, the Argentines drew another weapon card. So that's that. The Brits will ditch damage control because that tends to be quite a useless card for submarines. They, they tend to die more often than not straight away. Ah, helicopter. No good. Um, thinking about it very quickly, the Argentines will ditch that card. And the Brits, it's a... Oh, wait, hang on. Did I draw a replacement? I didn't. No, sorry, Argentines. Another passive sonar card. Brilliant. Over to the very frustrated Brits who will ditch that helicopter card and draw... <gasps> oh, the order has come through. Sink it. So... 
all the safeties are off now for the Brits. They have their orders, and next turn they're going to execute them. And they do this just as the Bouchard angles in with her passive sonar to see whether she can pick anything up. So a rating of zero. No, British luck is holding. Not only have they got a confirmed attack message, the Argentine sonar sweeps are still not getting them. So all hell is about to break loose on the British turn because they're going to hit the Belgrano with a good old-fashioned Mark 8 torpedo. And that removes the restrictions on Argentinian play, so they can now play all their cards because they've been attacked. So the, tor the torpedo goes streaking in, the Belgrano sees it and tries to evade. Um, oh, and the weapon misses. That's not good. Well, not good for the British. It's great for the Argentinians. So the Brits will draw a card. It looks like no one's out of the woods yet. Argentines can do lots of stuff now. So the Belgrano is going to launch her helicopter. And then she's going to play... Hmm, actually, no, let's... Um... Let's have the Bouchard do it. The Bouchard is going to go active and is going to try and get a lock on the Conqueror. So, sonar rating of one. And she does it. The Bouchard has picked up the Conqueror. Things have got pretty hairy for the Brits now. So the Argentines will... So four, five, six. They now have a hand of eight cards because they're on high alert now. Which means things are going to get pretty scary for the British unless they can finish her off quickly. Luckily for the Brits, they've been spending the game building up a good stack of weapon cards, so Conqueror is going to fire again. I just realised I sold Conqueror short in the last attack by not adding her attack value for, to the torpedo. She would have hit the Belgrano, but never mind, this is more exciting. I'll remember to add it this time. So... Two things are going to happen when this attack occurs. Um, the Belgrano is going to try to evade again. Oh, actually, no, the Conqueror would have missed anyway, because I drew a zero. And the Bouchard is going to use her passive sensor to increase her lock. So the attack strength is four, seven with the Conqueror's um, weapons capability. Eight. She scores a hit this time. So what happens to the Belgrano? Sensor times two. Okay, the Belgrano is wounded, but she is still very much in the fight. But she does want to get out of there fast or get some repairs done. So Conqueror draws, and she's going to have to fight for her life a bit now. The uh, very angry Bouchard is going to capitalise on Conqueror's failure to spot her earlier by playing a close-range card. Now, because all they're all regarded as separate ships, um, not rather than operating as a group, this won't affect Belgrano's helicopter. So the Bouchard closes in on the Conqueror. Things are getting very hairy for the Brits now. And that brings us to the end of deck number one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this one here. And the reason I'm going to do that is I, I'm conscious that while this scenario very well modelled 
the growing tension among the two sides as you know Conqueror was holding on to its lock and waiting for attack orders from London uh, and the Argentines couldn't really do anything until something happened. It built up a lot of tension but I realize it probably doesn't make very good viewing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the ending of this scenario as a separate video um, and I'll put a warning in the description. So if anyone wants to skip past the mounting tension and go straight to torpedoes, you know, tearing through the water and, and destroyers racing to protect their wounded charge, they can go straight to the separate video to view that. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to it because things are incredibly tense now. So I will leave this one there for now. And I will look forward to catching you all in the next part of this mission when I record what will be a shorter video, I think, just to finish off either the Belgrano or the Conqueror. It's sort of open season on both at the moment. Um, so it just remains for me to say thank you very much for um, watching this video and for following this series. As always, a huge, huge hello to my veterans. It's always a pleasure to see you guys and thank you so much for your company. Um, and again, if um, uh, if any of you are here for the first time, a warm welcome to you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're here for Attack Sub, please do check out some of my other videos. And, uh, and if you're here for Wargaming generally, please feel free to meander around the channel. Um, before I sign off, I'm just going to um, issue another heartfelt thanks to Happy Wanderer for creating this scenario and the cards. I really enjoy these. They are absolutely brilliant and I will be playing them a lot. So thank you very much, sir. And to all of you, whatever's brought you here, thank you so much for tuning in. I will look forward to seeing you in the concluding part of Sink the Belgrano. Bye.